All right, let us begin with our review of the 46th 46, 46, um, Sabbatical, 46, uh, Sabbatical, which is known in the Hebraist or Hebrew as Aikev, Aikev or Aikev, which is known as Aikev or Aikev. All right, uh, okay, the computer acting up a little again right here. So this is Sabbath, the Sabbath, um, Kufa, or the portion in the Hebrew they call the part of Shabbos, number 46. So this is number 46 right here. We're saying the 46. When the 46, um, sabbatical. Uh, and if you go to page 6, at the bottom of page 6, you should uh, find it there. Now let's just look up something on this, on our computer um, from our notes. Something from our notes. And let's see if we have our um, notes right here and to bring this up. So let's begin. It is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Right, chapter seven, verses um, twelve to chapter eleven, verse uh, twenty-five. All right, Deuteronomy. This is for the Sendet Kufel of portion number forty-six. Number forty-six. Now, what is contained in this forty-six uh, parasha? What is contained in this forty-six? in the 46th portion. Now, we usually utilize the Schofield uh, study and the Schofield reference, Schofield reference Bible. Uh, and let us go there for one moment to begin off this 46th uh, review, and then we're going to touch on what is contained in this particular sabbatical. We're about to make a year a complete and a, a full cycle. We will say our first um, full cycle of Torah studies and and parsha and portions and readings. And the importance of it for basic Bible study, especially for a lot of the Adis Met Metoj or the for the newcomers, you understand, or those who are are immature, not mature, but are, but are like newborns. The Bible study, because we have been asked this question, um, has been presented to us by, by by several. Is like, what what are the Bible, you know, what are the Bible studies? What are the Bible studies all about? You know, what what are our Bible studies? Now, our Bible studies are the basic um, sabbatical, um, the Sabbath, the Torah portions, the Torah portion for our readings and, and and the feedings. These are our basic uh, Bible studies. Now, here. Beginning off with um, the 46th, in chapter 7 of Deuteronomy, if you have a Schofield Study Bible, you can go to LOJ Society and you can download, you know, the PDF that we have, or you can get a hard copy such as this. In the 46th reading, um, it begins at verse 12, and it's the promise of victory. There's a promise of victory. Now, the last part of the... 45th, which we were able to um, touch on somewhat, but not really get into get into all of the all of the prerequisite um, detail. There's, there's a certain portion that um, we did not uh, get into, but hopefully you did in your studies. We didn't we didn't we didn't broadcast anything concerning that. But um, was the command to separate? There was a command to separate. Mm. This command to separate is very, very important because if you've been following the teachings, the readings, and the feedings, the command to separate is very important. You understand? It's very important. Now, these are all the commands that are given, the warnings, instructions, also. In the last portion was the was the Shema, or, or the, the the Shema. The Shema was in the 
the 45th portion, the last Torah portion, last reading and feeding. And the Shema, as you should know, is the, is the, is, is the word of witness, the word of faith. The here, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord, or Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. That is the Shema. It is likened to, um, in fact, when, when you hear Muslims say the La ilaha illallah, you know, there's no God but, but, but God, as they say. Um, it actually comes from this, what's known as the Great Commandment. That's, that's the part that was concluded, the last portion of the reading, the feeding. Now, moving forward, we're in chapter 7. So the last portion ended at chapter 7, verse 11, and this portion is beginning off at chapter 7, verse 12, at the next verse. And it says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that Yahweh thy Elohim shall keep to thee the covenant. He shall keep the Ka'al Kidan. Now the Ka'al Kidan, or the word agreement, let's put it right here, the Ka'al Kidan, Right, and in the English, you can spell like this, the kav, which means word, right, and the kidan is very important. On the Hebrew, we call this the benai barit, the benai barit. Maybe you have seen this, the benai, um, um, uh, some set spell as barit, and there's various um, 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 spellings. In the stand of the Berit Hadasha, the Berit Hadasha, which we know as New Testament or the New Covenant. But it's all based on this the Kal, the Word, this means Word right here, the Word, right? And this, this uh, Kidan, like Kidan, is to cover or the Word agreement, the Word that covers this contractual obligation. So, so we have a contract with Jah. We have a contract with Yahweh. And the reason why we as, as black folks, gener generally speaking, but in particular as the Beit Israel, the reason for a lot that has happened to us in just even the past 400 to 500 years has to do with the violation of this Kaal Kidan. This Kaal Kidan. And also it's based on the lack of knowledge of his word. Because see, the knowledge of the word also, also, um, um, uh, in a sense, dictates the actions required. It's like a, it's like a, any other kind of contract. And the interesting thing is, you all should know about contracts. You understand? You have many, many types of contracts, whether even with one's cell phone or internet provider, or if one has, you know, rent and they live someplace. I mean, there's a, there's a whole variety of contracts. And you do understand that if you have a contract and you don't keep your part of the contract, you know, then you are in violation of that part of the contract and is liable. You are liable now. It's a liability. That means it's a minus. It's not, it's not an asset. See, the assets is like the barakat, it's like the blessing, and the liabilities. You understand? Know are like the curses. So we as the Beta Israel, the, the important thing that we learn, once we learn our identity of who we are as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, as so called um, black Hebrews and black Jews or Ethiopian Hebrews, the Beta Israel or the Falashas for us, we are the Falashas of the West. Now we know about the Falashas of the East, so the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Jews of the East, but we are the other portion of the family. Because remember, Yahweh says that He will scatter us into corners. He scattered us into the four, the four parts of the world. That's why even the cross as a symbol is also a symbol of our um, dispersion as a people. So we know about the Falashas of the, of the East. You understand? But many of us don't know, and many people don't know, or don't want to, don't want to know of the Beit Israel of the West. And we're not saying all black people, we're not saying all black people, you understand, even though the true ethnic Hebrews are black people, we're not saying that all black people are also called African Americans, or all are, are, are Hebrews or Israelites. But we're saying that the experience, you understand, 
of this enslaved African people and the and the judgments were all focused and based on the punishments or the curses for disobedience or the liability that the Beta Israel incurred. In other words, it is all about us. In other words, it's really, I mean, even the world situation has so much to do with black folks, if they only knew, and especially, particularly of those black folks, the Beta Israel. You understand? So there's a responsibility. You understand? So if we don't know who we are, it doesn't mean, in other words, if, if we don't recognize that we have a al kidan, then we still are in violation of it, and there are still liabilities or curses. You understand? Know but if we can recognize who we are, and we are in good standing, you understand? Know in good standing in the al kidan, you understand? Know and in the grace and the truth of Yeshua HaMushi, of Jesus Christos, then we come into the assets. You understand? Know and the assets, on the asset side of the ledger, that's the barakat side of the ledger, or that's the blessing side of the ledger. But now on the liability side, those are the curses. So what's very, what's, what's, what's in particular very important about this particular reading and feeding, and I think before we go forward, we have to just review. Let's, let's just review for a moment, because the 46, um, in Dihim Yohona, or Ike Ev, Ike Ev, Ike Ev, which begins at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, is continuing from Lemenhu, you understand, or the Etchanan, where Etchanan, you understand, um, and I beseech, or I besought, or I pleaded, Lemenhu, Bamarinya, and I begged. You know what? It's Moses speaking of how he begged Yahweh, you understand, even on our behalf. But now, from chapter 7, this is beginning at chapter 7, verse 1, is the command to be separate. Now, many of you may be familiar with that in the New Testament sense, where he says, come out of her, come out of her. Now, we touched on the last video, one of the last videos we had touched on, um, we, po we posted was on the 2011, the London riots. And as you know, that went on for about four or so days, and now, the, the the British the British and the English police are going around and they're arresting everybody on on their CCTV that they you know caught and you know they're they're basically trying to 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 now um, bring the terror to say don't ever do this again because they understand they understand and their soothsayers and magicians and pronosticators all understand and recognize you understand the signs of the time. They understand the signs of the times, you understand? It's the lost, the lost who don't know, you understand? It's so-called the lost sheep or black folks who don't know, you understand, who really don't know what it's about. But for those of us who are, coming to, who are coming to repentance, those of us who are preparing for the return, preparing and are seeking to come out of Babylon, come out of this confusion, come out of this spiritual Egypt, you understand, we need to know the Al Kidan, we need to know the terms of the covenant, the terms of the agreement, the terms of the contract. Because even if one want to say, I ain't an Israelite, I ain't, uh, uh, forget about that, I'm just an African American, I'm just, I'm just American. You know, well, you're still on the liability side. You, you, you're over saying you're still subject to the liability. It's like if somebody says they have a bill or something and they say we're going to take you to court or we're going to seize your properties or assets or whatever like that for collateral or whatever, and you say, oh, I don't care about that, and you ignore it, it doesn't mean that it's still not in effect. See, this is where we have to understand the higher law, the higher hook, you understand? And we as the law sheep are responsible very much for the global confusion. Not that we are the prime initiators of that, but we were to be the restraint against that as well as the regulation against the evildoers. So when we say, well, how come black folks are suffering the most? You understand? There's a very simple and clear and provable reason, rationale, evidence for that. And we find that in our uh, Torah studies, in our um, Bible studies. You understand? So... Um, Woe to those pastors and preachers that scatter the sheep that don't that don't teach this. This is very very. Remember, this is God's. You know, this is this is Jah's. This is Jah business. 
the overseeing. So now the command here to separate it is when Yahweh thy Elohim shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, or Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. This is actually one thing that we wanted to touch on um, from, from, last, from, from last week, and we really didn't get an opportunity. You know, we didn't get an opportunity um, to touch on it because we had certain books that we were finishing up on, as well as in the publishing process, and we discussed that in another video, the Rastafari Preliminary Notes on the Alice First Bible, the Mesmore Dawit, the Parallel Bible Version, and also other books, you understand, that are already online, and other ones that are coming online, you understand, in order to prepare this people. Now, one thing that we want to touch on from last week that was revealed to us when we was actually going through our, um, our late earthly father's uh, manuscript, the biblical antiquities of the black race, um, and that should be also um, available. It's already it, it's already is available, but we hopefully we'll have some copies soon, and and maybe can do a video and um, you know a presentation on that. But in going through that particular manuscript and preparing it, you know, going through the editing and the preparation process and and annotation and commentary and certain other necess necessary information. We came across something that my father, my late earthly father, had um, mentioned, and it was about the, um, the Ethiopic Wars. I don't know if you ever heard about the Ethiopic Wars. Let's see if we have a, a place and opportunity for that. I hope you have this. We'll, we'll, we'll try to put it right here. Let's just put right here the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic um, War, actually war, singular. And there were seven um, nations, you understand? Know seven nations or seven tribes or seven peoples involved. I don't think I have um, any of the manuscript over here at, at this present time. But he quoted, my earthly quoted from Josephus, Flavius Josephus, the, um, the early, about 100, 100 um, A.D. or so, roughly around that time, give or take, um, he wrote the so-called Antiquities of the, of the Jewish People. And in that particular um, um, document and that series of, of, of volumes of writing, he touched on something known as the Ethiopic War. Now, it's very important to really understand all this in, into context. And the Ethiopic War is something that's known to the scholars and the, the academians and the uh, bibli, bibliolators and others, you know, Christian theologians and others. They know about this because in their seminaries and other things they study this. But it seems as though, besides Flavius Josephus mentioning it, it seems like a very significant incident that happened, the Ethiopic War. But it seems as though no one really takes too much, has, none of them have taken an interest in these Ethiopic Wars. But this is another connection when we talk about the Ethiopian Hebrew and the Black Hebrew and the Beta Israel and Ainat Rastafari. This is another very important historical connection both to the Ethiopian people or the Ethiopic people, you understand, and the so-called biblical Hebrew Israelite people. That actually brings the two together. And we were inspired to go and, and to check it out a little bit. And in our checking it out, one thing that we found that was interesting is that the Ethiopic War, and we'll, we'll try to do another, another presentation on that, but why we're mentioning right here is because it involved seven nations. There were seven nations that were involved in these um, in this Ethiopic war, and these seven nations seem to correspond with these seven nations right here, where in um, Orit Zedagim or Devarim in the Hebrew Devarim, the the words or the the, the negroch, the, the matters, um, and in the, the Ethiopic Orit the Torah Zedagim of the repetition because a lot of the materials that have already been discussed elsewhere because we're coming now to the, 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 the fall festival season and we're coming to the end of a cycle as September is coming forward, the September time and September 11th, we're coming to the, 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 the um, fall festival season. You understand the fall festival season and the new year. So in this loony solar cycle, this orbit, 
we are now approaching the completion or the perfection, you understand, of that time. You can see that we're at 46 right now in Dihim Yehonal or Ike Ev, you understand, and we have 54, 54 or so readings. And we had begin, begun off the sabbatical studies. If you go back, you probably can check some of the, the earlier videos. You'll see that we began off the sabbatical studies at the 47th, which is Re'e uh, or Re'e or Ra'i. You understand the Ra'i or Ra'i in the Ethiopic, which means the vision, which means the vision. And here we have Re'e, which is the next week's sabbatical parsha or portion. Now, there's a, there's a connection. There's a connection to all of this. I know I'm touching on this and that, but these are all for you all to take notes of, to take notes of. And then when we have time and opportunity, we can go into full detail on each one of these. What we're trying to do in these presentations, give one a good overview, you understand, and touch on some of the various different subject matters. Now, what we hope that the Dekam is Amorit and the disciples and, and those of you all who are interested do is take good notes, is really to journal you understand, to journal or to diary, to have a, have a study or a, a, a Sabbath, a sabbatical diary, you know, or use a composition notebook to take notes of some of these reasonings, take note of some of your studies. And over time, you will find that to be very, extremely valuable. We cannot stress it. We don't know how many have really heard this word that we have mentioned and kind of repeatedly have mentioned it, but those who have begun, as Christ says, um, those who... Um, seek to do the will, will know of who the teaching is. They will know whether this teaching that we're teaching is truly the teaching of the King of Kings and His Christ, or whether it's just something that we're saying and making up. Because some people say, oh, you know, that's your interpretation. You understand? This is not our in interpretation to say our personal interpretation, because no scripture is of private interpretation. You understand? When you are truly interpreting or interpreting, the scripture is not of a private matter. This is what counterfeit Christianity has done is, 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 is turned the living word of God into an idolatry of demons and demon nominations. You understand? But as we, we're coming out of that spiritual Egypt, that's part of the spiritual Egypt, that's part of the confusion. Now, the Ethiopic War connects with these seven nations that we find here in Deuteronomy chapter chapter 7, at the beginning of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse um, 2 says, And when Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, thou shalt make no covenant. That's the key right there. He says, We shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Now, people say, well, why? That, that sounds awfully, some people say, that sounds awfully unloving. That sounds awfully cruel. But remember the principle that even the Psalms disclose, that um, no mercy is shown to those who, who, who don't show mercy. You understand? So if you don't show mercy, if you don't walk in mercy, this really explains a lot of the more um, shocking and saddening things, like in the news. We hear about wars. We hear about famines. We see mothers and children and, and people dying and starving like in the Horn of Africa. And everybody tends to turn into a weeping willow and forget that um, what you sow, you reap in that sense. You understand? The only one that can help us to overcome the negative reaping, you understand, for the, our sowing is really Christ and, and is coming into his way. Then he helps us manage those things we did when we were astray and we were outside of his way. But if one is not born again, you understand, then they still are in debt. So this whole idea about debt and debt crisis, we give thanks and praise for it because it now it gives us a good opportunity to explain from the Kaal Kidan the very same things that you already know about in the world. You saying you already know these things in the world that you live. You know, you know about contract and covenant. And you know that if you have an agreement and you don't, they take you to court, and then they are able to um, um, uh, invoke certain judgments, punishments, like foreclosure and all those kind of things because of breaking of contractual agreement. Now, they say, there's a saying in, in the West that ignorance of the law is no excuse because some people will say, but I didn't know that was the law. Well, still, ignorance of the law is no 
excuse. You see, when you go into a certain area or jurisdiction, the first thing you should find out is what are the laws in this place? What sort of laws? In, because I might do something that is wrong and get really in trouble if I don't know what the law is, the rules, the regulation. You know, how, do, how does this place operate? In other words, what are the community rules? So we as Rastafari, as elect Rastafari, and overall as Ethiopian Hebrews, so whether we are Rastafari or we are just faithful Judeo-Christians, you understand, we still as an ethnic people are Ethiopian Hebrews, but it extends to the Gentiles. The Gentiles also, so-called white races, white folks, Asians and other nations, they have an opportunity as well. It's not me that say that. It's his word that say that. So if we truly as Rastafari, we have a immense responsibility. That means we have an awesome blessing or an awesome liability. You, you understand? Once we say, yes, I and I is Rastafari, we have to know what are the rules and the regulation, not according to these or those elders, but according to the King of Kings, according to our Master, according to the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. This is why we're, we're so much into the, the scriptures, the Bible, the biblical studies, the Torah readings, because we really want to know. And the beautiful thing is that as we start to learn and learn what His way is about, and we start to look at the world, we really start to overstand. We really start to say, wow, ain't that something? Basically, what the world's been doing is requiring you to keep covenant with them, with Babylon. In other words, we already keep in ignorantly, knowingly or ignorantly, we're in covenant with Babylon. If you don't believe me, then, then take out your ID. Look at your ID. Whose jurisdiction? Whose logo is that? Whose gods are those? on their logos, on their seals, and so forth and so on. Are those the gods of the Bible? You understand? Are those the Greco-Roman gods? So think about whose system, whose world you really are living in. Now, the importance of this particular portion right here is that the, the key word, akev, or akev in the Hebrew, has the meaning of if. Now, Bamarinya in the Amharic, if you look at the Sabbatical the, uh, um, um, chart, the reading that we provide, you understand, on page 6, the interesting thing you'll see, it says on 40, uh, for 46, it says, And and like this, it may be. This is the same very sense where it says to us as we get to verse 12, Wherefore it shall come to pass if. You understand? If, in other words, it shall be like this, but there's this conditional, there's this conditional clause, if. You understand? If. You understand? I and I and the Father, if. You understand? And we have to understand what that if really means. That if is like when you go sign a contract or you go to a bank and you get a loan or something else like that, and they tell you that, that if you pay us back on time, then it'll go well with you. But if you do not, and if you are late, such and such will happen to you. You understand? You know, such and such is going to, you're going to be, your interest rate's going to go up and all that kind of, and you know, interest, let me just say this for the record, things like interest and usury, it is totally ungodly. You understand? And most of the economic, financial woes and mess is all because of usury. Usury and interest. And we don't know how these people can call themselves a so-called Christian nation. You know, all these so-called um, Tea Party, Terrorist Party, the rest of these Bible thumpers, these bibliolators, you understand, these Anglo-American bibliolators, how can they try to say, well, America is a Bible base, it's a Bible, it's built on the Bible and based on the Bible, and there are so many points that they have outrightly just disregarded and violated it, but what they did was tell people this and hope and expect that people would not look at the Bible for themselves and say, you hypocrites. You, you all are a bunch of hypocrites. So this whole thing about the economic and the debt crisis is also about usury and interest rates and, and interest. All of that is illegal in any so-called God-based society. So you go to court or something, and they say, so help you God. Either you could swear. Now they say affirm because a lot of people got wise and say, oh, why do I got to swear? Jesus says not to swear. So now they say, well, if you, you uh, I, I swear or affirm, you understand? In other words, I swear or affirm, they add this in, but they don't explain it to you. And in many court cases, courts, they make you swear on the Bible. Now imagine that. You're swearing on the Bible and you don't even know what's in the Bible. 
So if you're swearing on the Bible and something you don't know in the Bible, you are violating, and there's a punishment for it, and the punishment comes into effect, how can you say, well, I didn't know? Why did you swear on the Bible you didn't know? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, why did you do this? Out of ignorance. That's why ignorance of the law is no excuse. So even though many of our ancestors might not have known these things that we now know, there's still no excuse, you understand, to the violation of the al of the covenant. So, just moving this a little bit forward right here, it goes on to say, And when Yahweh thy, thy God shall deliver them before thee, these seven nations. And I want you to keep one. And when you see these seven nations, that, that Deuteronomy, as we go forward, even in the studies of um, Joshua, so from so on, you're going to hear more about these seven nations. I want you to look up and search out the Ethiopic War and look up Flavius Josephus, the Ethiopic War. You understand that when my earthly father's book become available, also look for the biblical antiquities of the black race. That will help to give you a little more background and context to to this 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 matter, this very important matter. You know, was because the history, what we're living today, is based on what happened yesterday and what happened the day before that. So when people say forget about the past, you understand? They are just bringing woes on them. You understand because. They, they don't know what the thing that was the thing that will be. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, and thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Verse 3, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thy, thou shalt not give to his son, nor his daughter shall thou take to thy son. In other words, we should not marry our children into their children, for they will turn away the son from following me, that they may serve other gods. And I hate to bring this to one's attention, but we're living in a society which is serving other gods than the God of this Bible. We're li even, though the, even though many people boast in the Bible, say they're Christians, so on and so on, but we're living in a society over all that's not governed or operated by this Bible. It may take and, and twist certain things here and there, but it, it, it's not. not. And people say, well, do you want to live in a society that's governed by the Bible? Well, if the Beta Israel are the governors, you understand, yes, I do. But if a, if a people, you understand, who are no people, if, if, if Jews that call themselves Jews by not, I don't want to live in that society. You understand? And that's the society we're living in already. We already in that society, but we have to deal with what we got to deal with right now. So the preparation right here is now informing us that when we go forward, how we should behave. So will the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. It says that ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people to Yahweh thy Elohim. Yahweh thy Elohim hath chosen thee to be a special people to himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, see, a lot of people have a problem with this, especially when we as black people say we are the Beta Israel. We are this people that, that Deuteronomy is speaking about right here. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 for thou, we can say, for we are a holy people to Yahweh our Elohim, or to the King of Kings, our Father. And the King of Kings, our Father, hath chosen us to be a special people to himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. It's just plain and simple like that. You understand? People say, well, we are all equal. We are all, that's the devil's philosophy. You've got to watch out for the devil's philosophy. The devil's philosophy is, is bringing, is bringing the, 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 the tragedy you understand, um, on this earth right now. Um, it's more I want to say even on that, but let's just stick on this right now. Yahweh, Yahweh did not set his love upon you. In other words, he didn't set his love upon us nor choose us because we were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. Think about that when we talk about the true Rastafari, the elect Rastafari and true Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? We're not the greatest people. We're not the, we're not the most in number. You understand? But we are actually the fewest. This is also something that we have to understand because some of the brothers and sisters, so some of the brothers think that we need to get a whole bunch of numbers. We need to get a lot of, a lot of heads in order that will show something. 
that is all a worldly approach to that. We one has to be born again out of that out of that worldliness. But because Yahweh loved you, He loved us, and because he would keep his oath, his Sheba, which he hath sworn to your fathers. Hath Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, in other words, the house of slavery. The house of slavery for us is this strange land that we call America. I mean, this is the house of this Western Babylonian system, this condition. You understand that you call it New World Order, you could call it Illuminati, you call it white supremacy, you could call it, um, you know, there's a lot of names, descriptors that you can use for various aspects of it. But in a biblical context, we have been redeemed out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yahweh thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant, once again, the al Kidan is very prominent here, and mercy. So those who keep covenant have a right to what we call and know, Bamarinya. Let's see if we can put this up right here as um, Mehiret. Mehiret. Mehiret is a Mehiret. Mehiret is mercy. You understand? So covenant and mercy is connected. Those who are not in covenant are not entitled in any automatic sense, to any consideration of mercy, firstly and foremostly. With them, they have to forsake their false gods. See, if they forsake their false gods, then, then there's, a, there's a different course now, you understand, to deal with them. You understand? And with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. This is, you'll find the same, the same language found in the what's called erroneously the Ten Commandments. It should be the Ten Words, the Decalogue. The Decalogos is the Ten Words. You understand? The Asertak Alat. That love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and he repayeth them that hate him to their face. You see what's going on in the Horn of Africa? You, you see this uh, so-called Somali drought and the rest of that? This is for those who, many, I'm not saying the women and the children, you understand? But I'm saying they're men. The men. See, the, the men are part of the Shabbat. Those are the ones that are trying to destroy the Judeo-Christian polity known as Holy Ethiopia. You understand? We have to really understand that very, very well before we become all these sort of so-called bleeding hearts. Like I say when one say, oh, look, isn't that, isn't that something? What's going on over there? First thing I say, they're not I and I women and children. They're not the women and children of I and I house. They're not, they're not I and I people. Yes, it's, it's, it's sorrowful, it's a shame, but I, I say about even with the um, so-called Somalians and the rest of them, I say, I say, where are their men? Their men are killing, you understand, our people who are trying to defend in part or in principle, you understand, the name, you understand, and the foundation of covenant Ethiopia. They're trying to destroy, they're trying to destroy our religion, our, our faith, our spirituality, Tawahedo, Judeo-Christianity, you understand? They are not our friends. I want you to understand that. I want to stress that to you. Some of y'all on the YouTubes and making comments here and there and going around, you know, checking out some different subject matters have already recognized that. You understand? Recognize that many of them who say, yes, I'm Ethiopian, they don't want to recognize us. They even hate us over here, even though they come over to the West to try to benefit like black African Americans. You understand? But when we talk about we're Ethiopians, they hate, they're not our people. You see, so this is why we have to be able to, as Malachi chapter um, 1 says, I think 1 and 14, um, um, is it 1 and 14? Um, or is it 3? And where it says that you must discern between him, discern. Discernment is so important. And I see a lot of you brothers and sisters, you understand, who are seeking to do Yah's will, but your lack discernment. You understand, your lack discernment. You understand, some people think that this crisis that's going on in the Horn of Africa is our problem. Remember what Yahweh is saying to us. Yahweh is saying to us that those nations he will remove out of our land. And where do you think our land is? Verse 18, actually chapter 3, verse 18. Then shall ye return, 
the aliyah, the repatriation, and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Him that serveth God. This is, I just went to Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 to verse 18. Put that down for your note. It is very important just to understand what we've been saying right here. But let's just, let's just, let's go forward. What a feat, what a feat. It says, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. Should the true and living God be slack to those who hate him? Should the king of kings and his Christ be slack to those who hate him? Think about that. Now, when you start to see these things around the world, like in the Horn of Africa, you have to ask, do they love Christian, Judeo-Christian Ethiopia? Do they love the monarchy, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, or do they hate him? So you have to really understand what it's saying right here, because this has a lot of um, resonance with who we are and where we're at right now. You know, this is not for us to, it's not us hating them, but we have to recognize what is really going on in that situation. You understand? Know and not go off script or not flip the script, so to speak. You understand? But to stay in the script. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. You notice how that's trifold? Thou shalt keep, therefore keep the what? Commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Now, the promise of victory is where this particular Sabbath, Kufu number 43, which is Deuteronomy 7, 12, now begins off. But to put into context, we just read all that and went through that brief commentary to put this into context to put this particular Sabbatical um, Kufal or Padashah in the Hebrew number 46, to put it into better context for us. You understand? So verse 12, when it says, Wherefore, it shall come to pass. We're understanding the context of the wherefore. You understand? Because maybe you read this last week, and maybe you've forgotten that part, and some people study, in a sense, in a very, like, automaton way. Okay, it's Deuteronomy 7, 12 to 11, 25. I'm just going to read that part. You understand? And then the connectivity with what it was connected with is lost. And that's where um, a lot of errors creep in because of that. So to get out of that, we just did a review before moving forward. So it says, mm-hmm. Now, it says, Wherefore, if it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. Notice what it says. It says, You hearken to what? Verse 11 says, In Gadi. It says, Thou shalt therefore, in other words, and keep. It is emphatic. It's not saying, well, if, in that sense here, it's saying, keep. Verse 11. But now when we get to verse 12, it says, And de him your horn now, wherefore it shall come to pass, if, if ye hearken, if you hear. You see, a lot of folks probably over there are tired of I and I teaching these things. They're like, why don't you talk about some other things going on, you know, like kind of otherworldly sort of things. Oh, they're talking about Bible and Torah, yeah, whatever. I'll check you out on something else. Well, I, you know, that's your choice. You understand? It says, if ye hearken to these judgments. If you don't want to hearken to it, well, we're going to touch on what happens to those who don't want to hearken, hear, obey. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. Even that's trifold. If you hearken, if you hear, and if you keep, if you protect and or guard in that sense, and do them, and if you do her, 
if you keep her, if you do her. So the judgment is, in a sense, feminized here. There's a judgment that's feminized here when you start to understand the, the Rab or the Royal Amharic Bible and, and the, the language, the Amharic language, when, when you come to that, that, that next Daraja, you know, once you complete Nabab Bait. Nabab Bait is very important, you know, Amharic Bible studies, um, Amharic online. Check us out. Go to LOJ society.org and, and click on the Amharic online and, and the Amharic links, those who are interested in, in, in the discipline and the study of the language, that particular um, 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 education right there. It says that the Lord thy God shall keep to thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear to thy fathers. I'm like, Ye maloun kal kidane na mehiret le ante ye tabik lahal. It says that if you do, if you keep your part of the agreement, in other words, if I and I keep our part of the agreement, Yahweh Eloheinu, Egiziavi ham la kachin, Nagusin the guest abatachin, says he will do his part. Right? And he, verse, uh, verse 13, it says, and he will love thee. Now, people say, well, God already loves us. Who, who, what devil told you that? He say, it says he's angry every day with the wicked. Who do you think he's talking about? You understand? If you don't do his will, you understand, then that's wickedness in his sight. He, may, he, might, he might let his sun shine on you and, he, you know, allow you to live and so forth and so on because he's not willing that any should perish. You understand? But don't think just because you are whoever in your delusion you think you are that God's love is, is there with us in the, proper, in the proper context if we are willingly ignorant of his word. You understand? And people might say, oh, you're preaching legalism. You're preaching legalism. Let me tell you something. There are laws and there are laws and there are laws. What we see in this world is that if you violate laws, they throw you in jail. Sometimes they throw you in jail when they, when they think you did something wrong. And then later on, they release you after you serve a lot, of, a lot of the best years of your life, you understand, in prison. Say, oh, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. Oh, that's so sad. That's somebody's life right there. But the point is, they did all that on a sense of law. You understand? So don't allow these demoniac, false, counterfeit Christians to say, oh, that's legalism. We're not under law. We're under grace. Then why you got laws? Then why in your society do you still have laws, hypocrite? Bunch of hypocrites. In other words, one's one tell us we shouldn't be studying this. Mm. And, and one tells us, well, uh, it's all about the love and the grace of God. He'll forgive every. He'll forgive all of that. And then when we go and read his word, we see a, we see a contradiction to what the false preachers and pastors are, are, are telling us. In other words, who, who, are, who are to believe? Our lying, reading eyes and our hearing ears? Or we're to believe these people that, that say they're of Christ and then we look at what Christ say and they contradict what Christ is about? Who are we to have faith in? That's, that's kind of like a no-brainer. You understand? That's a, that's a no-brainer right there. But he says, you know, what did the... You were did this himal, ye barik himal, ya bezah himal, ye set him zen la abato chih be male lacho midar ye hode hina fere ye marate hinim a fere ye ye marate hinim fere ehilin ehil ehil lihin wine hinim zay to hinim ye cup to hinim bizat. Ye begahinim menga ye barika ye barika lehal. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. Now, let's understand the context of what's being spoken about here. Mm. Take this down because we want to get into some of the details, what if he, right? Let's understand the context. It says, and he will love thee. Remember, if you look in the King James Bible, your Bibles, you'll notice that. After verse 12, there's a colon. They're not a period, not a full stop. The importance of this is that the idea that begins in verse 12 continues into verse, 
into verse 13. So that means that these two verses, the sense of verse 12, which begins the 46th sabbatical reading and feeding, that's known in the Hebrew as Aikev or Aikev, and the Amharic as Indihim Yohonav, it connects now, the basic theme and idea is, is a connected theme and idea. So he's saying that if you do this, then he will keep his covenant and, and the mercy which he has sworn to our ancestors, yeah, our Beta Israel, our black Hebrew ancestors, and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee, and he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thy oil and the increase of thy king or the cattle, the cup. You understand? And the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear to thy fathers, to our ancestors, to give us. We're speaking about the promised land. And the land, we're sp the, the region we're speaking about, actually, quite interestingly enough, is that very same Horn of Africa region that's having one of the most devastating drought and famine seasons in the last 19 years. This is not a coincidence. This is revelation. We're living in revelation time. So we as Rastafari who speak about repatriation and the Beta Israel who also are speaking about coming out, the Ethiopian Hebrews coming out of the Babylon or coming out of this system and returning to our, our promised African Zion and our African lands. We have to understand the big picture too when we see what's going on in that particular region. But he says that he will drive them out. You understand? He will drive them out and he will rearrange the whole geopolitical global situation for his Al Kidan, his covenant keeping people. You know what I'm saying? So if we keep the covenant, if we do our part of the contractual agreement, he will do his part of the contractual agreement. And he goes on in verse uh, 14. Mm, verse. 14, he says, Ka'ahzabim kulu yilk yetabarakhe tohonale be sohinna be kaptehim zen wen dabihon wain seita bitohon mekan ayahona behim. And says, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Now, let's look at this. People will say, when we say we're beta Israel, black Hebrews, and therefore we are seeking to embrace and grasp and take hold, lay hold of the tree of life, lay hold of this covenant, right? People will say to us, oh, everybody's the same. Oh, you think you're chosen, you think you're special above. No, every, they're trying to bring us down. But notice something about our present condition, especially the lost sheep's present condition. We are niggas. Black folks are the lowest of all people. Think about that. Even in lands and countries that we have been in since the first um, slave masses, since masses ships brought us the USS Jesus, the Caesar Bogiers and others brought us over, the Caliphate, the Antichrist brought us over here, that other peoples have come after us, you know what I'm saying, and rose above us, you know what I'm saying, who have come over here, so-called immigrants, and so-called employing us and all of this. Now, now what they do because of counterfeit Christianity, they say that it's all your fault because you niggas are lazy. You niggas don't want to work. The only thing that you're lazy with, the only thing that we're lazy with as a people is that we're spiritually lazy to recognize our identity, who we are, you know what I'm saying, and to do what we need to do to improve our situation. That begins by studying to show ourselves approved to God as workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand? In other words, study to learn the word you understand, know and then by and by to do the work. So this is where this is the the, the 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 terms he's giving us as we are preparing as the Israelites in Deuteronomy were preparing to come out of the wilderness. As we're preparing to come out of the wilderness of North America, he is preparing us for that promised land with basically setting the rules, regulation, our way of life, community rules. The, the rules of our society, of the line of Judah society, as we are coming out of this. He's saying that we're going to be blessed above all people. So when we're on the asset side, remember that point about assets and liabilities? We didn't put that up here before, but let's just say assets, right? Assets are like the blessings, 
and then we have the liability on like the curses. In other words, this is the plus side of the ledger, you understand? And this is the negative side. This is the negative side of the ledger. There are the blessings, the assets, and the liability. So now when we come into covenant to the Kal Kidan again, you understand in Yeshua, in Jesus Christos, you understand, to the glory of the King of Kings. Christ in his kingly character, Yahweh and the Mushi and the Messiah. See Psalm 2. You know what I'm saying? Why do the heathen rage, you know? Yeah, and, the, and, the, and the people, you know what I'm saying, they imagine vanities and vain things. You know what I'm saying? That's the present condition of this world. And in this cursed, cursed earth and cursed world situation, we as the lost sheep have been the cursed above all people. Now in the Al Kidan, we as Ethiopian Hebrews and like Rastafari, we now become the blessed of all people, but that's conditional on us keeping the Al Kidan, keeping the Benai Barit, keeping the covenant, and therefore coming to the asset side or the Barakat side of the ledger and not the liability side, not the curse side of the ledger. So now on the on the assets. This is, this is now speaking of our divine assets. This Torah, this Torah scroll reading begins by setting out, as, it, as in the Scofield says, the promise of victory, but it's actually setting out the terms and the conditions. You understand? As we go to chapter 8, it gives us the warnings and the exhortations. And then in chapter 9, more warnings and exhortations are given to us. And as we go to chapter 10, remember this particular reading goes to chapter 11 and 25. So in chapter 10, there are even more warnings and exhortations. And in chapter 11, which concludes this particular um, Torah portion readings, it is speaking of, of, of even more warnings and exhortation. And it's important that we don't skip over these things. You see what I'm saying? We don't skip over, like, blah, blah, these things. But really understand, and I think the best way to really comprehend for those who are willing is to look at our present condition as a people. And then as we get to Deuteronomy chapter 28, or you can go there now from verse 15 to verse 68, you can see what we as the lost sheep have, have experienced, you understand, for over 400 years. Some people say 500 years later. You understand? But what we have experienced over this time, and compare it, if you will, to every other people. To every, well, I don't care what, first you could compare it with the so called Jews. Yeah, they had the Holocaust for a couple of years. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that they did experience, you understand, the Holocaust. You understand? Because they were keeping, you understand, uh, this black way of life, basically. You understand? Even in a so called whitewash, still, they were keeping a black way of life. You understand? The ultimate way of life, you understand, that overcomes the counterfeit Christians and the Satanists. You understand? And Hitler definitely was a Satanist. You understand? So the, the biggest threat to Hitler and white supremacy is true, you understand? Judaism is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the biggest threat to so-called white supremacy, to the Gentile, the Gentile um, world system. You understand? This is why the Gentile world system is in crisis. It's in crisis in, in every which way because you can see Yahweh now is changing the whole geopolitical situation and is preparing. He's preparing a place for us. So as we continue right here, it says to us um, in verse 15, it says, Exiabirim himam min hulu ka'ante yarkav. Ye mitawak awinema kufuena, ye gibit a beshita hulu, the antelaya yadarissa yadarissa be him. Bet a latoche him hulu lai, ya meta bachua, and Yahweh Adonai will take away from the all sickness. Now, that's another thing, they'd be talking about the health, like the health crisis in America, and it says, especially the minorities and black. And inner city and ghetto people and poor people are the worst affected. And ain't you know that something? So we're the cursed of all people, basically. We're the worst affected. You may not like the word curse, 
but you hear people talking about generational curses, and we are suffering as a lost sheep from generational curses. Because whether the former generation had an inkling of this same truth or not, they did not do all in their power to make it their reality. They may have heard, they may recognize Jesus is black or Israelites are black, but they then, so what? You understand? So what? You understand? Unless our righteousness be more than the Pharisees, Christ says, the Messiah says, we shall in no wise enter into the kingdom, into the kingdom of heaven. So he says that Yahweh will take away from us all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt. Now we're in a spiritual Egypt. You understand? And there are evil diseases, you understand, that are afflicting and affecting the people, all people in one way or another, but but the the people who are most afflicted by it are black people. Black people. Black people. This is not racist to say this is realist. We're not being racist, but we're being realist about it. Which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all that hate thee. But see, we turned into, because of disobedience, we as the Beta Israel, when we lost our identity, became lost sheep, we turned into being haters of him. Whether knowingly or not, we were not doing his will. We didn't even recognize who we were. You understand? They call us niggers. We say we're niggers. They call us colored. We say we're colored. They call us black. We say that we're black. They call us general African, American. We say that when the word came that we're Ethiopian Hebrews, only a few recognize that truth and grasp it. You notice that? But most folks will still say, oh, yeah, we're African American, and the government refers to people as African American, even though some will say, I'm American. That's the whole other situation there. But verse 16, he says, And thou shalt consume all the people which Yahweh thy God shall deliver thee. We shall consume them. We will consume, say, destroy them. Those who are delivered over to us, like put in our hand, who are our enemies and the enemies of our God, you understand, and worship false gods, they are to be destroyed. Then I shall have no pity upon them. This is Bible. I know him. Atazina Lachawim Yam Wet Ameda Yohon Bahalina Ama Likato Chachawin Atama Likacho. It says, Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a sneer. That will be a sneer, a wet med. Yam and that wet med. Yohana Bahalana, serving these false gods, whether it's the white Jesus, Caesar Bogier, whether it's money, dollars, this 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 Gentile so called way of life, material things, bling bling, the golden calf, whatever, these are sneers. They're they're like traps to us. You understand? These are traps to us. Verse seventeen it says, But live to him in the Ziahizaba Kane look if thou shall say in thine heart, because you, 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 you hear, in fact, some have told us, we haven't seen, I don't know whether they put the video up there, but once I've told us that, you know, there, there are some of these, these uh, to put it in simple, fake-ass rosters who, who call themselves roster but are, 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 are contravening, countermanding the teaching of his majesty of Haile Selassie so they so they like they're like identity frauds. You understand? They call themselves Rasta, people are not Rastafari, you understand, think that they represent Rastafari. So when they see us, they think we're about the same nonsense and foolishness, you understand, and godlessness that they are about. Because they'll say, Well they have dreadlocks they say, Ja, they, they, they may smoke marijuana or listen to reggae music. That's just like you. You're the same thing like them. But it's speaking about those mentalities here. If thou shalt say in thy heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? You understand? In other words, if we say that they're more than us, you understand? He tells us, don't be afraid of them. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shall well remember. We have to remember. Keep this in mind. 
You know what I'm saying? Learn this by heart. Keep this in mind. Talk about this. Reason on this. What Yahweh, our Elo, did, our Elohim did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. And to all Egypt. Says the great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm that Yah. You understand that that black power fist. That, that, that Yah, Yemen, that Yod, whereby Yahweh, thy Elohim, brought thee out. This is what we're going through now. There are some great signs. And they're very much Egyptian-like signs. In other words, the same signs that fell and befell upon that particular Egypt at that particular time are the same signs that we see befalling this spiritual Egypt in this present time. But see, the counterfeit preachers and pastors are not talking about those things. They're talking about gay marriage. You know, they're talking about some other little crazy kind of issue. They're not preaching the gospel. They're, they're preaching the world. They're not preaching the gospel to the world, revealing to them the wisdom of God, because they, don't, they cannot reveal, they cannot um, 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 claim title that they don't have, in other words. So he says, so shall Yahweh thy Elohim do to all the people of whom thou art afraid. This is one of the reasons why many of us are still in the West, if the truth really be taught. You understand? We look over there, we see, we see um, Al-Qaeda of, of, of the Horn of Africa, we see Shabab, we see the wars, the rumors of wars, we see Rwanda, we see the drought, we see all these things, and people get afraid. There's a lot of folks who are plainly, they won't say, oh, I'm afraid of that. They'll say, oh, Africa, they'll, they'll, they'll talk it down. You understand? They'll try to talk themselves out of it. But Yahweh says, I know you're afraid. You understand? You keep your part of the agreement. Yahweh, Eloheinu, Exiari, Amla, Kachin, Negusin, Neges, Abba, Tachin says he will keep his part of it. And with this global rearrangement that we see gradually working out, you understand? It seems as though, you understand, this people in these last days, hearts are beginning finally to turn, you understand, from the disobedience of their ancestors, you understand, and into the obedience of the King of Kings and his Christ. And we hope and we really pray that that will prove itself, you understand, to be the prophecy-fulfilling reality for us as once lost but now found beta Israel. Amen, amen. It says here, verse um, 20, it says, Degmon, and also, or moreover, Moreover, Yahweh, thy God, will send the hornet. He'll send the hornet or the tarb among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. When I think of the tarb and we think of, of, of the, Ethiopic, the Ethiopic Deuteronomy, we start to see even the, 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 the scarab, what they call the scarab or the karab, the karab, the kiru, you understand, the so-called scarab beetle, you understand, or a beetle like that, which is that hornet. That, that, that Yahweh Eloheinu, he sends before us to deal with those who still, you understand, are trying to illegally occupy or claim the land that has been given to Yahweh's people because he's promised it to our ancestors. So even after 400 years, there's a saying that um, Yahagar that even one who has an inheritance after a thousand years still has title to that. So even if we've been away from Africa and our ancestors for 400 or 500 years, 
it doesn't mean that we don't still have title to that land, according to he, the judge that really judges, according to the King of Kings, our Father. Amlak talak ena yemiyas thara amlak beme kakale no winna kanor su yetnesa at the nigget at the denigget at the denigget thou shalt not be afraid don't be at the nigget uh, don't be in a mental shock you know what I'm saying don't be like them the negatu the, you know then a mental shock not just fear but it's a mental shock. It's almost like a psychological breakdown. Don't be affrighted. Don't be psyched out. Don't let, don't let what's going on psych you out. You understand? Don't be psyched out at them. For Yahweh, thy God, is among you a mighty God and a terrible God. Some say, you don't want to come out because those people over there, they'll kill you. Really? That's what you think? That's not what Yahweh Eloheinu says. That's not what he has done before and what he will do for us again. You understand? So it is, it, is, it is our faith, you understand, versus their folly, you understand, their false beliefs, you understand, and proving to them with the book, you understand, with the book, even the book of the seven seals, you understand, and with the authority of the King of Kings and his Christ, whose God is the God, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. To conclude this particular area here, let us just move on. Let's just water feet, water feet. Let's move forward. Verse 222, 22. 22.